Okay, I uh, took the seat out of the bus here. Um, we are home from our trip from Iowa. It was an awesome trip. Um, but being it was our furthest trip, uh, it's the first time uh, going this far. And myself driving a truck for a living in a truck that has air ride suspension, the cab itself is air ride, the seats air ride, and the tires have air in it. So I'm pretty uh, spoiled. The stock seat here just wasn't cutting it. Man, I just, after a couple hours, it just, big thing was it uh, just was a little bit too low. I needed it to be a little higher, and you couldn't dip it back any further. Um, but, so we took that out. Here's the four holes. Um, rather than trying to drill new holes, because I got a, uh, I'll show you here. Try to get out of the sun. I got a new seat here. Get in the shade here. This is out of a uh, Kenworth T680. It's a seat for an over-the-road guy. Um, it had a flange on it on either side, on the front and back here, to bolt it. But to drill the holes in the floor, um, these floors, when they put the seat in, they, they beef up parts of the floor where the seat's going to be bolted in so that if you were to... Uh, you know, have a bad accident the seat don't come ripping out of the floor so if I would have drilled new holes they were just going to be in um, not as thick as metal and plus where I'd be drilling them would be kind of hard to uh, get your hands up in there to put the bolts through and nuts or whatever but uh, so what I did is I just took a piece of uh, well, let me show you the old seat makes sense a little more so this is the old stock seat and you can see the base on it and it is adjustable, but it just ain't comfortable, no matter what you do. But there's uh, two bolts on either side. So what I did is I just measured it, and the perimeter, it's, I think running this way, it was about 19 and a half inches wide by 16 inches deep. So what I did is a local welding shop, I just had them cut me a piece of quarter inch steel plate, which is right here okay and then what I did is I actually sat that seat onto the metal plate and then I marked the holes and then I took it in the bus and checked and put the bolts in make sure that the plate the holes were lined up with the floor and then what I did is I just uh, welded the plate to the seat to the underside of the seat now it had a flange as I said on the front and the back but I cut the back one off because I wanted the seat to come back as far far back as I could because the sliding position to make it go forward goes up really, really far. So then what I did is I welded it on either side, just some spot welds on either side, nothing too crazy. And then I put these strut rods, welded them in there uh, just to kind of beef it up. And that's basically a look at it. This is for the lumbar, that means this will come out and kind of support your back, and then this is the up and down, and that raises or moves the back forward and backwards, and then this is your adjustable armrest. So, that's basically uh, what we've been doing here today. Um, had a great time on our trip, really loved it, um, despite the fact that this seat was just um, killing me. Of course, I'm going to sit down here for a minute. Because I'm getting old and I'm out of shape. But uh, when we went to Iowa 80, honest to God, um, when I went inside the truck stop, and you know, they've got a bunch of really nice custom seats here. And when I sat in one of them, I contemplated literally buying one. But then it wouldn't do me no good there because the odds of it bolting up were slim to none. Plus, they were $1,000 plus. So I just dealt with it, and um, but I said when I get back home, I'm going to get me an air ride seat. And the uh, guy that I drive truck for, he had this seat brand new in the garage, um, but it was uncovered for about four years. So it just had, I mean, it was covered in dust, looked pretty bad. But being the seat was new, nobody sat on it, so the cushion obviously was untouched. So uh, he gave it to me, and um, I brought it home. 
and uh, I power washed it and man, it come clean really nice uh, there are a couple like grease marks on it from somebody moving it with some greasy hands um, but I'll use a little bit of cleaner on it but it cleaned up really well I'm pretty happy um, if I thought that it wasn't even gonna come clean I just would have put a seat cover on it um, but that seat there is probably eight nine hundred bucks and uh, so this will be a game changer make it more comfortable it's air ride and um, what I had to do was buy a couple fittings, which I'll show you. A couple fittings. This is a T here that there's already an existing airline under the dash that I'll cut it. I'll put this in, and then I bought some airline that I'll hook into it, and it'll go to the seat. And uh, that'll make things much more comfortable. Um, I am going to have to take this bracket off because that's where the seat belt uh, bolts on So we'll have to still do that, but other than that, it's pretty much done. I'm gonna get some paint on it and uh, Be pretty good to go. I'm not really sure what these do here I Haven't quite oh this one one of them pulls the seat out so it extends so it's almost like sitting on a couch because This will extend out and really give your legs some good support one of them does it and the other one I'm not sure what it does so and I'm not even sure what this does here. Some kind of lock. I think that allows the seat to kind of rock back and forth if you, because that's what it does in my work truck, and I don't quite care for that. So, but uh, this was probably the best investment I ever made—a welder. And then learning how to weld. Um, boy, I can't believe I waited so long to do it. Um, it's a little tiresome. Takes a little time consuming, but uh, the things that you can do. Uh, are just amazing so but here's a look at the bus got her all cleaned up from the trip and uh, so um, uh, we got a trip maybe scheduled in October to go up to New York um, at the end of October uh, weather permitting depends uh, a friend of mine that I'm talking to up there uh, I'll keep in touch with him and see what the weather's be like because it's kind of up there far north enough that you know uh, they may already be experiencing winter. It got down into the uh, 30s overnight here already. Beans, it's September 19th or 20th or something like that. So, um, but so we'll see. Hopefully, we can make this trip happen. Kind of looking forward to it. And uh, so yeah, so trying to get this done before then, and uh, which we should. Got plenty of time. It's not even October yet. But uh, got a couple other little things to do. I got to get the uh, bus inspected. It's up at the end of October. I'm probably going to get it inspected before, and it doesn't need nothing, so everything's good to go. Um, however, I did notice from our trip, uh, the only thing that I found wrong from bouncing on those shitty-ass roads was that one of the springs on the throttle uh, on the engine itself, the spring broke. It was a return spring, but there's actually two on there, so... I think one just backs up the other is all it is but it was just you could see it was more due to probably being rusty than really the road so I just put a new spring on it uh, but it's a good lesson to always really look at your your vehicles and really something of this size and something of this age you really gotta look into these um, you really gotta keep your eye on these things I see a lot of people on these uh, school bus Facebook forms and um, you know, even when some of them are thinking about buying a bus they're you know they're always inquiring you know what some pictures they have and a little bit of information if it's a good deal or not and if you're just unfamiliar with these type of vehicles um, you have to have somebody look at them because uh, got to understand that commercial vehicles are meant to make money and when you use them for recreation they take your money that's all they do um, and they'll take your money big time so you got to really know what you're getting into and uh, you know some of it's a gamble um, but a lot of it you know you can kind of ward off some stuff if you know what to look for and if you don't pay somebody to do it because um, these things can get expensive really quick <laughs> so but that's what we're doing here I'm gonna get back to work here and everybody have a good one okay look at the new bus driver I'm retiring so we got the airline all hooked up let me just show you what I did here all you got to do is find a uh, line that's got air to it love the right size 
Then here's the line I was talking about. It originally went up to here. But I just cut it, put this T, and then just cut a boot and a steering and ran the line right through there. And then on the inside I got it zip tied so it doesn't interfere with the steering shaft but allows movement so that when the seat goes up and down. So I want to lower it and raise it up and show the audience. The audience of four or five people that watch. I appreciate the con I appreciate the consistent watchers. I really do. Look at that. <laughs> Here we go, think it's a ride. And then you got the uh the, the lumbar that supports you. The button behind it, that puts pressure to your lower back. Feel that? Getting excited? Getting excited. I'm just kidding. For you to drive the bus, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> There you go, there's the overall way it works. This bolt I had to run it up the other way because you can see it's a little crooked because eh, you know, something shifted or whatever happened, but all four bolts are in, it's all good and snugged and rock and roll baby, California, here we come. How about Carlos Hernandez? He owes me a steak out there. Hopefully him and his family will be safe during these wildfires and everybody out there. Uh yeah, that's it. New air ride seat. Adios.